Good evening, everybody. This is the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Image Critique, and I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach here in Los Angeles, California, and I am glad you're here, and I'm glad I'm here. Uh, we got a great broadcast tonight. We got some phenomenal images to look at. I really appreciate you guys sending them in. I will put camera artists, guild photographers up against any group. I don't care. You can come at me with WPPI. You can come at me with PP, uh, PPA. You can come at me with any one of those other organizations. I'll put you guys up against them anytime. Your stuff is just that good. So, uh, okay, Willie Demetrius Richardson. Uh, it's another one of your, your images. Where do you get these models? I don't know, man. Uh, I tried to see whether you uh, were on the, the staff of, uh, of a fashion magazine or something, and you were getting models that way. But still, it's nice. It's interesting. It's a different shot. Uh, you know, it's a, the, it's different. It's well exposed. She's on the one third compositional line again, exactly where she's supposed to be. Uh, it's interesting in that it is a convertible shot. Uh, I think maybe, you know, there may be some posing that I would do a little bit different. I think I'd move this hand out from behind the mirror a little bit and find another place to put that hand so that you could see the hand that wouldn't be uh, cut off by the, the mirror there. But uh, kudos for inventiveness. This is a, a, an interesting image. And when you take it apart, when you deconstruct it, it's, it, it, it has leading lines leading you right into the, the model. The model is on the one-third compositional line. Uh, there is a bit of a shadow on her upper head here from something that's blocking the light. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether, uh, whether you're using artificial light. Well, it's all artificial light. But whether that's part of the set or something or whether it's part of your doing. If it is uh, just try to uh, dodge this area in here, bring it up a little bit uh, exposure-wise, and uh, that'll clear her face up. Let me see. Uh, let's try going to... Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant uh, to add, add a layer. Uh, change that uh, layer to overlay. Okay, now that it's changed to overlay, gray and black will lighten or darken. Uh, let's uh, increase the size of the image and move it a little bit more. Does it a little bit more? There we go. Good. Okay, very good. Perfect, I just triggered one of my programs. How in the world did I do that? Okay, now let's pick a brush. Get a brush, make sure that it's a soft edge brush. Go up here, it is, it's on the soft edge side. Set the opacity to about 10%. Whoops. And uh, change the color to white. Uh, let's go over here and change the color to white. We did that. And now let's shrink the brush up just a little bit. Whoops, send you to shrink it up a little bit there. And let's just add a little bit of lightness. There we go. Okay, not much, just a little bit of lightness into that area, maybe a little bit into that eye too. There we go, perfect. And we zoom out. And I mean, it's not much, it's subtle, but there's that, and there's that, and there's that, and there's that. And you can play around with it a little bit. Maybe I went a bit too far. If you think you went a bit too far, uh, go up to the opacity slider while the, the opaque layer is, is chosen. Uh, the, the layer is chosen, go up, take the opacity slider, and slide it down a little bit. See, all the way down, uh, it comes back. So let's put it maybe about uh, there, something along in there. 
uh, 89%, and uh, there you go. So that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, uh, any, any way you'd like it, but just something to think about. If nothing else, it's a technique that you can use on other images. Okay, all right, this is uh, Tim Stanford. Uh, great image, Tim. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, the 70s. When I come through the 70s, I'm a product of that. I had an afro that was huge, you know. I looked like the, the fly on car wash. And you probably, if unless you're an older guy in my age, you won't even know what, uh, what car wash was. But it was a movie. And there was one guy in there with a big afro. <laughs> but uh, the model looks great. Uh, there are several people that mentioned it. I'll mention it again. Uh, sometimes these lights will draw your attention away from the model because they are brighter than the model, specifically uh, the one over here. Uh, you may be able to clone that out. I haven't tried it. I wonder if I go to the stamp layer and uh, I just shrink that stamp layer up a little bit. Uh, Alt, stamp, and select. And let's go. Well, well no. Uh, Control Z, back it out. Sample again. There. Uh, Alt sample. Good, okay. Now she's moved from that side a little bit. And um, I wonder, the patch tool might work on this. Whoops. That was clumsy. Let's go up here. Let's try the patch tool. It may not work. Patch tool is kind of funny. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Okay. Uh, now you've got a little bit of line here and there, so you just want to patch tool around a large enough section that it fades into the background. And there. Now, now you probably could tone down the other bright spots here. You know, maybe this one. Uh, actually, I made that patch tool too large. Uh, yep, I made it too large. Uh, we'll try it right there. But now, see, now all of a sudden, the model itself is really beginning, beginning to jump out. Let's see. Let me take this patch tool and try. Well, this is great. There we go. Let's try it again. Now. Yeah. Okay. That toned it down a little bit. It didn't eliminate it. We could work at it, but I don't want to eliminate all of them. I want to leave some of it there so that it shines through. But now you're really drawing attention to your model and she just jumps off the page because the lights are, are out of the way. So give that a try. Um, you know, you don't have to do it. You can keep it the way it is. You are the creator of the image. You're the one that decides what you're doing, but uh, just as a possibility, something to tone it up, and something to think about when you're making the the, uh, the when you're making the composition. Remember that bright light draws your attention it, it, uh, when you're looking at the image. So you've got mid-tone lady, you've got dark hair, you've got a darker background scene. And so you want to kind of keep it all on the low key side and bam, she just jumps off the page at you. Okay, Tim. Thank you, brother. Let's go here.
Okay, good. Okay, Keith Davis, Philly. I love this, Keith. Really nicely done. It's a nicely done high key image. And believe you me, high key is hard to do. Uh, I teach a, a $1,500 course in high key at my studio. Uh, and people, you know, I get people signed up for it all the time um, because high key is so difficult to pull off. But uh, you come off with it pretty good. And one thing that you did do and that so many people make the mistake of trying to do, however you went about it, you left the shadows. You have to have shadows. If you don't have shadows, there's nothing to anchor it to the ground. And it begin, it just turns into something floating, which screams fake. This is a high key uh, photograph. Uh, and I, I love the way you, you edit it. Uh, it's very difficult to put everybody in there together, but you pulled it off pretty good. Uh, there may be some things that I would change posing wise, but you're not posing models, you're posing a family. And the main thing is that everybody is happy and interacting with one another. You, you carried it off, man. Congratulations. See, I tell you, you guys are good. And uh, I threw in another Keith Davis, even though I, I got one from you. I threw in this other one. You're really uh, starting to knock out some of these maternities with uh, interesting posing. Uh, you had a couple other couples uh, earlier. But uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. And I wanted to put it up. Now, the one thing I would do is add separation between uh, the, uh, the lady and the background she kind of gets lost up in here so you'd really need to add a light into the back area but not real bright not almost noticeable just a little bit lighter than her hair so that you can see where her hair begins and where it stops and that would bring and add a third dimension to it right now you're you're looking at two dimensions just the two of them on one plane but you would add, add that little light fade in the background. Uh, and uh, if you couldn't hide it behind either one of them, uh, what I do all the time is that I use a, a, a boom system in my studio. Now, I've made mine out of, uh, out of inch and three quarter, I think it is, water pipe. And uh, they're 10 foot lengths or something like that. And I just screw together a cage. Uh, I actually have two auto poles, and then I have uh, the water pipe, and I use uh, scaffolding clamps like you use for building a scaffold. You use scaffolding uh, or uh, chain link fencing poles that go on the top of chain link fencing. Any one of those to make kind of a cage where you have a crossbar going across your studio. Then the super clamps, you can clamp. A mono light up there with a seven inch reflector and a grid or barn doors and it will sit above everybody and point down at the background and give you uh, an interesting little pattern there especially if you have a really dense grid so that's uh, just something to think about 